Have you ever been playing Oblivion after having just saved the entire kingdom and only gifted a crappy set of Imperial armor and wonder to yourself, maybe I deserve a little bit more. Maybe I should be the one in charge. After all, I am the champion of Cyrodiil. Maybe I could be the emperor of Cyrodiil. Well, as a matter of fact, Bethesda thought the same. Maybe not exactly being the emperor, but you know, somebody a little bit more important. Originally, there was going to be an entire quest line allowing you to work your way up the ranks of the Imperial Council. Now, we don't know a whole lot about this quest line, mainly because it was cut pretty early on. One thing we do know is that you would have eventually become the Duke of Colovia, which just so happens to be a job position that is recently opened up, thanks to the convenient death of the last Duke of Colovia, who you find in Kavach. That's right, the shoes we would have been filling would have been in the castle of Kavach. Now, we don't know how much this would have actually entailed. I seriously doubt we would have seen the revitalization of Kavach, especially when you consider how most of the other quests end when you become the Grand Master or Grey Fox and all you really get is a crappy new home with the same dudes just walking around saying, how's it going, Mr. Fox? So I wouldn't feel too disappointed. Ultimately, there's really only so much you can do and completely rebuilding a whole new environment would have been a lot of work. But the real question we need to ask is why did they get rid of this quest line in the first place? Unlike the Imperial City Arena, which took up way too much space for the Xbox 360 to handle. The reason why this quest line was deleted, according to Todd Howard, is that it distracted from the purpose of the main quest. Now, I know what you're thinking. What? But what about the Dark Brotherhood and the Mages Guild and the Fighters Guild? All of those have absolutely nothing to do with the main quests, and they still are in the game. Well, that's because this quote is a little bit misleading. Because the Imperial Council questline wasn't an actual separate questline like the Dark Brotherhood or the Mages Guild. It was intrinsically connected to the main quest, and involved a lot more dealing with the Imperial Council and all its politics. Something that ultimately diluted the main focus of the game itself, which was the Oblivion Invasion. I think we could likely compare this to the Civil War in Skyrim. There's a part in that game during the main quest where you have to stop focusing on Alduin and try and resolve the threat of the Civil War. Now you could just pick a side on the Civil War and go through the entire alternate quest line, meanwhile Alduin's destroying the entire countryside, or you could do the quick option, which is just to have them resolve their differences for a few minutes. However, what if that quick option wasn't available? What if you were actually forced to join with the Stormcloaks and spend the next five hours completing their quest line before you could go back to the main quest. That's likely what we were dealing with here. Now, it would have been fantastic for them to somehow include this in a different way, but since it was so connected to the main quest, that would have required building this entire quest line basically from the ground up. A task that at this point in time was probably not possible. Now, for those of you who love calling developers lazy anytime they decide not to implement some completely unnecessary or unimportant feature, I would like to direct your eyes towards Cyberpunk 2077 as a perfect example of why focus and understanding your limitations and time constraints is very important in video game development. Something that Bethesda was pretty aware of when working on Oblivion and Skyrim. If Bethesda had bothered to try and implement every single removed or underdeveloped feature that didn't make it into the game, we would have undoubtedly ended up with a much worse and far less polished experience than what we already got. And while this quest would have been rather interesting, and it's disappointing it was cut, I think there is some truth in Todd Howard's words. After all, one of the things that makes the main quest line in Oblivion so interesting is the fact that you aren't actually somebody that important. You're just some guy who happens to be pretty good at killing, you know, Daedric Lords or whatever the fuck. Not everybody who's a great worker or a great fighter makes for a great leader. I mean, is it really a coincidence that by the time of Skyrim, every single thing that the main character was in charge of has gone to absolute hell. The Mages Guild was dissolved, the Fighters Guild continued to suck, the Blades have been destroyed, the Dark Brotherhood has been completely overrun, and the Thieves Guild is a complete disaster. Not to mention Shivering Isles has been completely abandoned for like a hundred years. <laughs> Ultimately, it probably was for the best that the Elder Council didn't give us anything to be in charge of. If you want more of this though, I highly recommend checking out my Imperial City Arena video where I talked about why they removed all the other arenas except for one. One, or if you're interested, you should check out the one where I ranked every single Bosmer in the Elder Scrolls. I'll see you there. Goodbye.